Fatiha. Bismillahir Rahmanir Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Malik Yawm Ad-Din wa Iyaka Nasta'in Ehdina Sirat Al-Mustaqeen Sirat Al-Lazina an Anta Alayhim Ghair Al-Maghdub Alayhim Wala Talim Amin We begin in the name of God, the infinitely compassionate the infinitely merciful. Praise be to God, loving sustainer of all the worlds, infinite compassion, infinite mercy, sovereign on the day of recognition. You alone do we worship and you alone do we ask for help. Guide us on the straight path, the path of those who receive your grace not the path by which we are brought down in wrath, nor the path by which we are lost along the way. So be it. Amen. Assalamu alaikum, friends. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We begin in the name of God. Infinite compassion and mercy. And we begin by simply bringing our finest attention to our breath. Knowing ourselves breathed by the one. And as we breathe and are breathed, we bring some degree of our awareness into the space of our hearts. Perhaps sensing our physical heartbeat itself. and the rise and fall of the breath. The breath and the heart beat like our built-in prayer beads, always there to call us back to the divine life coursing through us moment by moment. And with each breath, we empty ourselves on the out breath. And we are open to receive this moment on the in breath. Remembering Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his words, poverty is my pride. In the words of beloved Jesus, alayhi salam, blessed are the poor in spirit. And so we empty ourselves, opening to that inner poverty, 
that makes room for God. As we breathe, we add as a polish to the mirror of our hearts, la ilahe, on the out breath, and on the in breath, il Allah. And as you breathe, allow your awareness to become sensitive to the sounds arising around you. Perhaps a bird outside or a car on the road. Whatever is arising, Push nothing away. Rather feel it all arising within the ground of your open heart. Everything included in this la ilahe illallah.
allowing ourselves to rest in the simple wholeness of being, the simple beauty of being. And let us offer together that pronoun of pure presence. Three, Yahoo. Oh. And salam alaikum and welcome into the circle. Salam alaikum, beloved Jans, and welcome under the direction and with the blessings of our teachers, invoking the beauty and the grace that has flowed to our hearts from our teachers. My brother Matthew and I are honored to be in Sohbet with you this evening. Matthew, you were going to uh, give just, everyone yes. good news. Uh, welcome and um, a, a word of greeting from Kabir Dede and Camille Ane, who are on the West Coast uh, following the arrival of a new granddaughter and their family. She arrived on Kabir Dede's birthday um, and uh, they send their love, their greetings to all of you gathered here in the circle of lovers. So today we will be reflecting on the theme of the month, the hadith of our beloved prophet, peace be upon him. Would you have me tell you about actions that are better than fasting, prayer, and charity? Bring goodness and high principles between people. So this bringing of goodness and high principles between people is quintessentially the spiritual enterprise. It's what revelation is about. It's what prophethood is about. It's what the saints are about. 
And it is what we are gathering together to read the Masnavi for. It truly is the source of all good deeds. It's what animates good deeds. Because if this connection with goodness and high principles isn't there, then fasting is not fasting, and prayer is not prayer, and charity is not charity. All these are dependent on their connection with goodness and high principles. But goodness and high principles are not dependent on these deeds. Goodness and high principles is what is embodied by the prophets and the saints and our teachers. And when we sit with them in their presence, we can directly absorb goodness and high principles into our beings. Which is why in a passage in the Masnavi, um, Maulana has the prophet telling Imam Ali that even though you are the lion of God, don't rely on your lion-heartedness, your virtues, your deeds, but come into the shade of the sage. He says, of all acts of devotion, this is the best for you. You will gain precedence over everyone that has outstripped. And that sage for Imam Ali was, of course, the prophet, peace be upon him himself from whom he directly imbibed goodness and high principles. So let us bring ourselves into the shade of the prophets by invoking blessings on them. Peace and blessings on Hazrat Isa alayhi salam. Peace and blessings on Hazrat Maryam alayhi salam. Peace and blessings on Hazrat Muhammad Assalamu alaikum. And peace and blessings on all the prophets of the beloved. So today, we would like to engage in bringing goodness and high principles between us, between all of us, by sharing some transformational teachings from Imam Ali. The prophet said, I am the city of knowledge and Ali is its door. So whoever desires knowledge, let him enter through this door. So let's go together to this door. I would like to recite for you the Nade Ali, the call to Ali. Anna Kamil mentions in the preface to the Mevlavi Virth that one of the editions of the Mevlavi Virth used to contain the Nade Ali. Nade Aliyan, Mazhare Lajai, Tajithu Onan Laka Finnavai, Kullu Hamil Vagamin Seanjali, Bevalayataka Ya Aliyu Ya Ali. Call Ali, he is the manifester of wondrous things. In times of stress and trouble, you find him helping you. All troubles and griefs will be dissolved through your sainthood. Ya Ali, Ya Ali. So I'd like to share with you a saying of Imam Ali's that really led to a paradigm shift for me. It's from the first sermon of the Nehjul Balagha, the collection of Imam Ali's sermons. And the Imam tells us that one of the purposes of revelation, the sending of prophets to humankind, was to unearth the buried treasures of the intellect. This one phrase opened up my heart and mind. The first thing that happened was that all those, that niggling conditioning, that to accept revelation somewhere, I had to put my intellect partially to sleep, or that there was some irreconcilable tension between the truths of revelation and the truths of the intellect. This just flew out of the window, never to come back. Imam Ali's teaching about the nature of the intellect, what constituted intelligence, and who qualifies as intelligence, can, as intelligent, 
can be seen as an elaboration of the Prophet's hadith. Intellect is the foundation of my religion. The holistic, integrative notion of the intellect that emerges from Imam Ali's teaching liberated me from this narrow conception of intelligence that I grew up with, an intelligence that operated without reference to ethics or virtues or beauty or goodness. Imam Ali showed me that the intellect was in fact the faculty through which we apprehend the divine, that goodness and high principles were the buried treasures of the intellect. They belonged to the intellect. And that the beloved, with the gift of life, bestowed upon us the gift of the intellect because he, she desired to be known. So revelation and intellect are in a dynamic relationship with each other. We need revelation to unearth the buried treasures of the intellect. And we need the intellect to understand revelation. And in the battle that takes place within the soul, Imam Ali said that the intellect, the aql, is the commander of the forces of our Rahman. So what Imam Ali is telling us then, that the intelligent person, the intellectual, is not just someone who thinks correctly, but someone who thinks and acts ethically. Someone who is full of joy, someone who has the intelligence to dedicate their life to seeking the ultimate reality, the ultimate knowledge. Someone who is loving, someone whose knowledge is embodied in their actions. So if I were to say that this person I know is highly intelligent but unethical, Imam Ali would say a person who is not ethical does not qualify as intelligent. And I could say that I know that telling the truth is a virtue. And Imam Ali would say that you can only be said to know that telling the truth is a virtue if you are someone who tells the truth. For he says, knowledge calls out for action. If it is answered, it is of avail. Otherwise, it departs. And if I'm being miserable or complaining all the time, Imam Ali would say, you're not using your intelligence. For the most joyous of humankind is the intellectual. And if I were being unloving, Imam Ali would again put in question my being an intelligent person. For he would say, the foundation of the intellect is the assimilation of love. And if I'm telling, spending my time telling people that they've done something which God will never forgive, then too, Imam Ali would say, you will not be counted among the intelligent. The one who truly understands among all those who understand is the one who never makes people despair of the mercy of God. So now when I ask myself if I'm being intelligent or what the intelligent thing to do is, I have to bring different parts of myself together. Is this the rational thing to do? It has to be combined with, is this the ethical thing to do? Is this the loving thing to do? Is this what will bring joy to my heart and to the heart of others? Is there beauty in what I'm going to do? Is there courtesy? And in doing this, I begin to engage in what Imam Ali calls tawakhud, making myself one. Imam Ali tells us that the way that we affirm tawheed in our beings the way that we affirm the oneness of the one in our beings is through integrating ourselves, through engaging in tawakhud. And of course, I'm constantly falling short and I'm not asking myself this question often enough and falling short in answering the question when I do ask it. But at least now I am asking the right questions. And I'm not trapped in a view of intelligence divorced of beauty and kindness, integrity and love. And through his teachings, I caught a glimpse of the intellect illuminated with the light of revelation. 
Imam Ali teaches us goodness and high principles through his sermons in the Nehj al-Balagha, through his prayers such as the Dua'i Kumail, his letter to Malik e Ashtar on how to rule. Even that is relevant for us because whatever else we may or may not be, we are rulers of this little estate called the Nafs. So I would, I would just like to share a couple of incidents from Imam Ali's life because perhaps most powerfully he embodied these high principles in the way that he lived his life. So he was about to engage in a very difficult battle in which Muslims would be fighting Muslims. And a Bedouin came to him and asked, do you say God is one? And everyone around him told the Bedouin that this was not the time or place for such a question. They were about to fight a battle. But Imam Ali said, what the Bedouin wishes is what we wish for the people and delivered a sermon on Tawheed, oneness, in the battlefield, before the battle began. And he's showing us here that there is no time or place when the, when the bringing of goodness and high principles is not to be prioritized over everything else. And nothing could divert his attention from these high principles and goodness. He was not to be distracted by battles or conflicts or inappropriate behavior. The Kharijites would disrupt the prayers when he was leading them. They would heckle him during his sermons, but he never stopped their stipends from the treasury. When Hazrat Talha and Hazrat Zubair, two of the Prophet's great companions, fought a battle against him, he fought and won the battle against them, but then recited an ayat of the Quran and we shall then have removed whatever unworthy thoughts or feelings may have been lingering in their breasts. And they shall rest as brethren, facing one another in love upon thrones of happiness. And he prayed that any bitterness may be removed from their hearts and that they may all enter together as brothers in paradise. Showing us that even great souls destined for paradise can make great mistakes but it is possible to see past those great mistakes to the essential goodness of their soul, to always keep in view the transformational power of Ar-Rahman. So may we be inspired by the teachings of our prophets, the teachings of Imam Ali, and embody goodness and high principles in all that we undertake. And may our most beloved treasure be the treasure of good deeds. Thank you. Matthew. I mean. I told Shazra Jan that it was unfair to go after her because I would want to just fall into silence after her words. And maybe we can honor that by taking a moment just to rest in the heart and receive the beauty she's unfolded for us. Let these words land in our hearts more deeply. Hey, Papa. So this one wants to share a few more words, a few more reflections on our theme this month. Muhammad Mustafa وسلم, said, would you have me tell you about actions that are better than fasting, prayer, and charity, better than psalm, salat, and zakat, better than three of the five pillars of Islam. Would you want to know what that is, he says? Bring goodness and high principles between people. 
this is better than keeping our religion, he says, or perhaps this is the true and full keeping of our religion. Bring goodness and high principles, and not just between your fellow Muslims, he says between people, between all people, bring goodness and high principles. A prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, is moving us from mere outer form, outer ritual observances, which vary across the different deans, across the different religious traditions, to something that's universal, that can be shared by all people, that can include and unite all people. There's a similar saying of Prophet Isa, beloved Jesus, alayhi salam, that's found in the Gospel of Thomas, in which his disciples come to him and they ask, how should we fast? How should we pray? Should we give alms? What diet should we keep? And Jesus says, stop lying and do not do that which is against your conscience, for everything lies open before heaven. So rather than just telling them the rules, okay, here's how you fast and pray and give alms, rather than the simple satisfaction of now I know how to do it right, he calls them to a deeper alignment and integrity within themselves. Stop lying and awaken your conscience. Would you know what is better than fasting, prayer, and charity? Bring goodness and high principles between people, Muhammad says. In these teachings, Jesus and Muhammad, may God's heart embrace them both, are inviting us to something deeper than outer form alone. Thanks be to God, we are given the outer handholds and guardrails of our deen. Thanks be to God, alhamdulillah, that we're given the beautiful forms of fasting and prayer and charity that we're called to observe. These are essential. But the risk is that we begin to think that an outer mechanical observance is enough or is the point. And then we risk the development of a religious ego that is constantly bouncing back and forth between self-righteousness and shame. Proud of how perfect our observance is or guilty that it isn't. Would you have me tell you something better? Muhammad says, bring goodness and high principles between people. And so this has left me pondering as I've been with this theme the last several days, what are the highest principles of our path? And I could think of no higher principles than Tawheed and Zikrullah, than oneness and remembrance. Tawheed is the word we use to point to God's oneness and to the oneness of all existence. And Mahmoud has reminded all of us before that Tawheed is not simply a noun that means there's one God, but that it is in fact a verb, which means to make one, to integrate, to bring into unity. And we affirm this high principle of Tawheed every time we say the Shahada, La ilaha illallah Muhammadan Rasulullah. La ilaha illallah, there is no God but God. There is no reality apart from the one reality. There is no separation within the field of being, within the web of life. Kabir Dede has gone so far as to say, La ilaha, there is no God. There is no separate being or character or old man in the sky called God. La ilaha, il Allah. There is only that field of oneness that we call Allah. There is only Tawheed. And importantly, it seems to this heart that Tawheed is not expressed only through the first half of the Shahada. It's ex expressed in the entirety of La ilaha illallah, Muhammad and Rasulullah. These aren't two separate but related statements. These are one affirmation of unity. These Two halves are two mirrors perfectly reflecting each other. La ilaha illallah, Muhammadan Rasulallah. Muhammad, the fully polished heart, the completed human being, is the mirror in which 
the divine reality is reflected. And we can say Muhammadan Rasulullah or Ibrahim Khalilullah or Isa Ruhullah, Maryam Habibullah. We're to make no distinctions when we look into these mirrors. And we say that the secret of humanity is God, is Allah, is divinity hidden within the human being. And that the secret of God is humanity. That God is knowing God's self through the mirror of humanness. And for us to know ourselves, we must look into that inner mirror of divinity. La ilaha illallah Muhammadan Rasulullah. The voice of God says in one of our beautiful hadith Qudsi, I was a hidden treasure and I longed to be known, so I created the worlds. And the divine voice also says, if not for you, O Muhammad, I would not have created the worlds. The worlds exist to bring forth the human being, to bring forth the heart that is capable of reflecting the divine names. The completed human being is the ripened fruit of the universe. And not to be anthropocentric here, because of course the worlds exist to bring forth all of the beauty of creation, every expression of life. But the human being, we're told in our tradition, has been given a special capacity, a special function to know, to know that beauty and to be known through by the knower, by Ya Alim, to be a conscious mirror of the beauty and to see none of it, none of life as separate. All of, cre all of God's creatures, all creation are included in that knowing. Which, which brings us to uh, remembrance from Tawheed to Zikrullah. The Quran tells us truly prayer restrains one from loath loathsome deeds and from all that runs counter to reason. And there again, as Shazra was telling us, reason is not excluded. And then the verse, this ayat concludes, and Zikrullah is Akbar. And the remembrance of God is the greatest. And again, Muhammad وسلم, says, shall I not tell you about the best and the purest of your works before your Lord and the most exalted of them in your ranks and the work that is better for you than giving silver and gold? Thereupon the people said, what is it, O emissary of God? And he said, the perpetual remembrance of God. Perpetual zikrullah is the best and purest and greatest. Shall I tell you what is better than psalm and salat and zakat? Perpetual zikrullah. Along with tawheed, this is our highest principle and practice to remember God through an open and a well-polished heart. And ultimately, we find that Tawheed and Zikrullah are not two separate principles, but only one. For what are we remembering? What are we remembering, bringing into unity, conscious unity, if not Tawheed, the oneness of God? And as our highest principles or principle, Tawheed and remembrance are universal. They cut across and run through all forms, all religions, all humanity. And perhaps this is why the prophet tells us that they are better than our Psalm, Salat, and Zakat. Not because these practices don't matter, but because it's remembrance that makes them of real value in the first place. They must be infused with Zikrullah. And while our outer forms of fasting and prayer may not be transmittable across different traditions or across all of humanity, we can transmit and share in remembrance and oneness across and beyond and through all forms. And this is why, at least to this heart, when the Quran calls Tawheed the reconciling principle, Al-Kalima Asawa, this is why, 
that uh, Tawheed is that which is capable of reconciling all of humanity. Allah says in Surah Al-Imran, say, O people of the book, come to Al-Kalima Asawa, to the reconciling principle. There's that highest principle again, the reconciling principle between you and us, that we worship none but Allah, that whatever our tradition, we worship only that one divine reality, that we associate no partners with him, her, that we do not fragment the oneness of God by holding idols in our hearts, that we erect not from among ourselves lords and patrons other than Allah, that we do not make lords, gods of our own egos or of our worldly rulers. That, the Quran tells us, is the high reconciling principle that can unite different religions, different peoples, and all of humanity. Tawheed, oneness, making one. This is the Deen al-Fitra, the primordial religion. This is the Deen al-Haq, the way of reality, of truth, that Surah at Tawbah tells us prevails over or shines upon all religion. And so if we are to strive to follow in the way of Muhammad and the way of Mevlana, God's peace and blessings embrace them both, then we must be ambassadors of these high principles, ambassadors of Tawheed and of Zikrullah in the world, and ambassadors of simple goodness. And so held, held in the light of these principles that the prophets call us to, I want to give our beloved Mevlana the final word, a call to remembrance. Mevlana says, never be without the remembrance of God, for his remembrance provides the bird of the spirit with strength, feathers, and wings. If your goal becomes actualized completely, that is light upon light, nor of a nor. But in any case, through the remembrance of God, your inward self will be illuminated and you will achieve a degree of detachment from the world. For instance, look at the bird that wants to fly in heaven. Though it cannot reach heaven, moment by moment it soars farther from earth and higher than the other birds. Or consider a small box of musk whose opening is narrow. You put your hand into it, but you cannot bring out the musk. Yet your hand becomes perfumed and your senses refreshed. So too is the remembrance of God. Even if you do not reach his essence, her essence, yet his remembrance has numerous effects upon you you actualize tremendous benefits by invoking him. Would you have me tell you about actions that are better than prayer, than fasting, than charity? Bring high principles and goodness between people. And so may we enter into the remembrance of God, into our zikrullah, holding those high principles before us. And before we enter our, our zikrullah, Shazra, do you have any further words to share? Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Thank you, Matthew. Mm. The heart is refreshed. And so time for our zikr. Al-Fatiha. Bismillah rahman rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Maliki Omidin, 
Iyakana budu wa iyakana stain. Ehdinas sirata mustakim. Sirata ladina an amta alehim. Kairil makdubi alehim. Wala dalim. Amin. While we are in this world, in these bodies, we will not be free of sins, of faults, of mistakes. And we will need to turn again and again to one another and to our sustainer, crying astaghfirullah. God have mercy upon us. May we understand that this is not simply a cry that God have mercy on us, but also in us and through us, that we might become vehicles of divine forgiveness in this world. May we know ourselves forgiven. May we be forgiving. Bismillah, astaghfirullah. 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 Astaghfirullah, 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 Firuna, Estafiruna, 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 Estafiruna. Estafirullah. And resting held in that ocean of mercy. We turn to the master truth of our existence, that highest principle, la ilaha illallah. We say these words, la ilaha illallah, to remind ourselves that all of existence comes from a single source of life and being, that there is no separation within the web of life, 
and to remind ourselves to not make idols of the whims and desires of our egos. Felinamahu la ilahe illallah la ilahe Ella, 
even more deeply into the heart. We invoke that name that contains every name, that name present in every heartbeat. Ya Allah. Bismi Jalal. Bismi Jamal. Allah. Staying in the heart. Allah. Allah. Allah, 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 Allah,
Allah, Allah, Allah, Allah, Allah, Allah, Allah, Allah, Allah, Allah, Allah, Allah, Allah, Allah, Allah, Allah, Allah, Allah, Allah, Allah, Allah, Allah, Allah, Allah, Allah, Allah, Staying with the name silently in your heart. Feeling the resonance of the beloved. The goodness of the beloved. And that high principle of Tawheed. And so we turn now to that pronoun of pure presence, that pronoun of divine intimacy, Yahoo. Feeling in our own being, in our own cells, that hum that gives birth to the worlds. In the name of the essence, Bismizatika, Ya Allah, Yahu.
And resting in that pronoun of presence, we breathe light, remembering that Mavana teaches us light is the first food the original food of our souls, and breathing the simple light of awareness. and held in that subtle light. Our sister Shazra will close our circle. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We give thanks for the light under which we gather. For our peer, Hazrat Maulana Jalaluddin Rumi, for the generations of seekers and guides who have come before us, and for all those who have been our teachers. We pray for the health and well being of everyone in this circle our families, our children, our children's children future generations, our communities, and our planet. And we mention at this time anyone in need of prayer or healing. And may God Almighty make our intention and our awareness sound and bring us in readiness to the center of true beginning. And may the light of this circle be received wherever it is needed by the breath of Hazrat Maulana, by the secret of Hazrat Shamsit the Praise, by the nobility of Imam Ali alayhi salam and with the blessings of Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa rahmatul lil alameen and all the prophets alayhi salam let us say Amin, Amin, Amin. Amin, Amin, Amin. Oh. Thank you, dear friends, for gathering in the circle this morning for your presence, for your attention, for your love. Mm -hmm.